to another MRCOG video. On a previous video, we discussed how to assess the quality of the methods of an RCT, randomized controlled trial. On this video, we are going to look at how to interpret the numbers, the statistics that comes out of randomized controlled trials. So what are we going to learn in this video? Well, we are going to learn about risks. We are going to learn about risk ratios or relative risk. They mean the same thing, by the way. We are going to learn about absolute risk difference. We are going to learn about numbers needed to treat. And we will finish off with confidence intervals, 95% confidence intervals. Now, what I find really works is to work with some numbers to make all these concepts clear. So let's think of a trial of 200 patients. A new treatment, let's say treatment A, is being used to improve survival for patients diagnosed with ovarian cancer, let's say. And that is being compared to the current treatment, let's call it treatment B. Let's say 100 are randomized to treatment A and 100 are randomized to treatment B. When we follow up the patients for a year with mortality as the outcome, as the primary outcome, let's say that we find that 10 patients have died in group A, the patients who received the new treatment. And let's say in group B, the patients who received the standard treatment, 20 patients have died. So what is the risk of death in group A, the patients who received the new treatment, that is 10%, or as a fraction, that is 0.1. What is the risk of death in group B, the patients who received the standard treatment? That is 20%, or 0.2 as a fraction. So what is relative risk or risk ratio? Well, the concept is really straightforward. It's the risk of death in one group compared to the risk of death in the other group. So to get that, you simply divide one by the other. So the risk of death in the new treatment group, treatment group A, is 10%. The risk of death in the second group, the control group, the usual treatment group, is 20% or 0.2 as a fraction. So when you divide 10% by 20%, or when you divide 0.1 by 0.2, you get 0.5. That is the relative risk or risk ratio. The concept is as simple as that. A relative risk of 0.5 or half means that there is half the risk of dying in the new treatment group compared with the standard or the control group. Now let's move on to the next concept which is absolute risk difference or in short RD risk difference or ARD absolute risk difference. The absolute risk difference is the risk in one group minus the risk in the other group. In other words, the difference in the risk. So the risk of death in the standard treatment group is 20% and the risk of death in the newer treatment group is 10% and therefore the absolute risk difference is 20% minus 10%, that is 10%. Or as a fraction, 0.2 minus 0.1 and the answer is 0.1. So the absolute risk difference here is 0.1 or 10%. Now, how do we calculate the numbers needed to treat? Well, quite simply, that is 1 divided by the absolute risk difference. So here it would be 1 divided by 0.1, which will be 10. So the numbers needed to treat here is 10. What does that actually mean? It means that for every 10 patient who is treated with the new treatment, there would be one additional person who would survive. So now you know risk, relative risk or risk ratio, what is normally denoted as RR. You know absolute risk difference and you know how to calculate numbers needed to treat and how to interpret it. What is confidence interval? Let's finish off with that. 
So let's look at the concept of confidence interval. Now, in this example that we looked at, we worked out that the relative risk is 0.5. In other words, there is halving in the risk of death with the new treatment. But this is a small study of 200 patients. So there must be some uncertainty in the estimate of 0.5 that we have calculated. The 95% confidence interval is a way of representing that uncertainty. Now, if the confidence interval is narrow around the estimate, then we are pretty confident that the results that we have got could be true. So for example, here, if the 95% confidence interval goes from 0.4 crossing over 0.5 to say 0.6, then the confidence interval is narrow and we are confident that this could be a real finding. But if the confidence interval goes, let's say, from 0.1 crossing 0.5 all the way to, let's say, 1.1, then this confidence interval is extremely wide and we are not confident about this estimate of 0.5 that we have calculated from the data that is available to us. Now here is the important thing. A relative risk of one means that there is no benefit from the treatment. In other words, the risk in the treatment group and in the control group are the same. That's why you are getting a relative risk of one. So if your confidence interval crosses one, or in other words, includes one within it, then your confidence is extremely weak. And we would often say that that finding is statistically not significant. Great, I hope you found this video on the numbers, the statistics of randomized trials helpful. If you haven't watched the video on how to assess the quality of a trial, please make sure that you go and watch that. And until we meet on another video or at the weekend course in Birmingham, goodbye.